For some reason, people are tended to share their dramatic experiences. Like one horrible thing happened and a thousand nice things happens today. And I'm going to tell you about the horrible thing. Mm-hmm. Indeed. And if I only tell you about all the nice things, then what are you, Pollyanna? Are you full of it? Or are you just hiding stuff? <laughs> Welcome, honey. Welcome to another another episode of Driving to the Res. With your favorite hosts. Larry and Inelia. Good job, babe. Good job, hon. (laughs) So Uh, before we start, I'd like to remind everybody that this is the first part of our podcast. A good point. First part of our podcast. There's two parts. Second part is on... Subscribestar. Yes. Yes. You can go over to Subscribestar. And uh, support us by joining the second part. <laughs> right. I mean, we like doing the first part. Yes. And we love doing the second part. We do, yeah. We do the second part with a team. A panel of a panel. amazing people. Right. Yes. Professionals yes. and... Mystics. Mystics. Yes. So, so, go ahead and it's only eight bucks a month. Go over there, get the second half. Join the conversation. Indeed. And there is even an after party after each episode on Fridays at 9 a.m. Yep. On Subscribe Star. After so parties are the highlight of my week, I'm telling you. Oh my you. gosh. They're really, really fascinating. Okay. Yeah. All right. I was going to tell you my password, honey, but then the whole world wouldn't know how to get into my iPad. Yeah, we don't want that. No. <laughs> <laughs> Trust in your higher self choices. Yeah. I mean, I've heard that before. It's a, higher it self, it's a higher self choice. Yes. You've made a higher self choice to X, Y, Z. And I mean, you know, it might be f- maybe fighting or kicking about it, but it's a higher self choice. So you got to do it. Right. Right. Or is it an in between life's choice or, uh-huh, you know, uh-huh. all these other things come in a lot. So I thought I'd talk about it a little bit. Thank and you. And discuss it with you. So you wrote an article. So if you're listening and you like rather read. You can read the article. You can read the article. It's I would say published. do both, you know. It's like you you can get a lot more if you sit down with the article and read it. After you've opinion. listened mm-hmm. or vice versa. Mm-hmm. I mean, in my case, we do the after party. Mm-hmm. And the after party is usually on Friday. We uh, release our episode on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. And then on Friday morning, we talk about with each other, mm-hmm. everyone who shows up, mm-hmm. you know, what was in the podcast. But I often read the article that morning. And I get more out of it (laughs) in that morning just from reading it. Right. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So why is this happening to me? We often ask or hear others saying. (laughs) Why Why me? me? (laughs) I have asked that a hundred times. (laughs) Why me? Why me? Usually it's when I'm working on the boat. Oh, right. Yeah. And the nut's stuck or the bolt's That's actually an interesting (laughs) subject because I have watched you. As a fisherman for many years, <clears throat> and this year you've taken a back seat. You haven't been fishing, um, but I've watched that struggle and how challenging the whole thing is maintaining the boat and you know the ship, I should say, right. and the crew and all the things, prices of fish. And it's always a why me type situation, it seems like every single time. Yes. Yes. And just before you leave, a couple of before, days before, your body like shuts down, you know, gets, starts flushing and gets all sorts of <laughs> fevers not, and aches and pains and all the things. But you push through and you get there and you work and you're very good. You're very good at what you do. And... Um, But it seems to me that the larger self, your higher self, has been pulling you away from that. More and more. More and more, and in stronger terms. Completely true, yeah. It's a higher self choice that's in conflict with my, I guess I would say, my comfort. Or not my comfort, my um, habit. habit. Yeah, habit habit. and profession that you're really Uh, good at. And, you know, a lot of the time, a lot of the times, it's the things that... I used to talk myself into continuing mm. to allow myself to become, you know, very good at it mm-hmm. were the things that now I am using to stop me. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it might sound a little confusing, but to be a good fisherman, you have to go um, fishing. Yes. <laughs> and the strangest thing yeah. is uh, 90% of the guys, if not more, 
they're they want the end part, not mm-hmm. the like go out on the ocean part. Mm-hmm. They want the give me my paycheck part. Right? And that's what I, get. I mean, I've that's seen like, well, we're fishermen. Other... I think we're supposed to go fishing. But that's also, I've seen where we like it. other captains <laughs> go to their ships. Yeah, they ignore them completely. They don't even go into the engine room or anything. They go out fish, come back, pay the crew, get money in the bank, you know, and. Boom, it's done. But with you, it's like every little thing breaks and why me all day long for a whole week, two weeks, sometimes a month as you get ready. Oh, my gosh. You know, it's such a different experience. So that's interesting, isn't it? Would you say looking back like 2020 vision, although not quite because you're not quite let go of it yet. Would you say that it was your higher self trying to stop you from doing that? Or was it your higher self making it challenging so you would do it? Which one is it? The, no, there, there's, there was an aspect of challenge to it mm-hmm. <clears throat> that I enjoyed the challenge. Mm-hmm. And um, that was the reason that I would never get bored. Mm-hmm. And I told myself, it's all right. I can fish until I can hardly even get on the boat. It'll always be a challenge. Mm-hmm. Finding the fish, selling the fish, fixing the boat, getting the boat crew, etc. There was a long, long, long list of boat stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, and also you're addicted to surprises, right? So surprises. Right? <laughs> and it's like, okay, low frequency surprises or high frequency surprises. Which surprise would you like today? <laughs> well, you have a a um, I will call it a somewhat jaded experience of fishing. I can't. Yeah, if I'm on because a boat, there's no fish. There's no fish. Yeah. <laughs> My hair's off me. Sure, I'd never go fishing. <laughs> mm-hmm. Probably I would like it a lot or something. I don't know. And I would get distracted. But when I'm on a boat, it doesn't fish. And any boats around me don't fish. Yeah. Well, for a period of time in my life, right, mm-hmm. that held enough fascination and attraction and interest and surprise and not all low frequency and not mm-hmm. all high frequency, but all challenge. Yeah. To keep me interested, interested so you, enough to do it, because in the past, whatever job I did, if it lasted more than six months, I was shocked. Because it was too easy for me. It just you. became no challenge, no too easy, and it's not interesting. You lose lose interest, you know. So you're you're like driven or in, motivated by challenge. At at that level uh-huh. of awareness, yes. challenge was interesting. Yeah. What about now that you have a different level of awareness? Level of awareness changes everything. Mm-hmm. Would you say now that challenge is a motivator for you? No. Uh, those negative challenges? No? No. What would you say motivates you these days? There's a... It's more of a... It's hard to describe or explain. It'll take me a minute to think about it. But it's not a that it, it's not a challenge that um, motivates me. But no challenge stops me. Do you mm-hmm. understand what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's like whatever it is that we encounter, I know I'm capable of dealing with it and handling it. If we encounter a challenge, mm-hmm. so challenge isn't the motivation, but it's not an obstacle either. Mm-hmm. But why? What is interesting isn't to go set myself in a situation with a lot of challenges mm. that doesn't uh, motivation that's not my prime motivation what is your, <clears throat> what is your prime motivation now well i'm still kind of searching for it but um and now in in switching from one to the other it's like switching from a higher self choice to keep me occupied to a higher self choice to navigate the split Mm. And navigating the split, which is something that we talk about often, is more of an intellectual, spiritual, experiential, sharing like we are right now process. And um, when you're in the middle of doing it, having it and being it, mm-hmm. it's maybe a little bit less easy to say it, but... It's this. <laughs> yeah. This is this is this is something that I cannot do fishing. Right, indeed. I yeah. mean, but fishing was something that kept me occupied where I otherwise might have become so probably distracted by I don't know what. <laughs> I don't know what. I just I just feel like that it was interesting enough to keep me 
occupied. It also mm-hmm. allowed me to do the things that I wanted to do that, you know, brought me to here. Mm-hmm. A certain amount of freedom, a certain amount of um, autonomy. Yeah. So that I could uh, make my own schedule and have the financial ability to do the where, go where, take the time off or not, or, mm-hmm. or whatever it was. I was autonomous, right? Mm-hmm. Whereas if I was maybe entrenched in a solid career of some kind, yeah. then uh, maybe, maybe no, I don't know. Okay. It'd be harder to maybe quit a 25-year, 20, some, there's some period of time when you go work somewhere like the Coast Guard or the Army or FAA or government service or even any job where at some point you retire, I think, right? Right, right. So... At some point, you're so close to that, that no matter what you might ought to be doing, you will continue doing the other thing because you're not going to retire. Why would you not? <laughs> right? right? It's kind of like set up in the system. Yes. So if I were in one of those type of jobs, it, it might have been harder for me to just yeah. slide over, right? Yeah. Maybe. There's a speculation. No. Okay, let's continue with the article. As yeah. light workers, we often want to figure this out. Yeah. Right? yeah. That's what yeah. has happened to me. What's happening? And when it comes to negative interactions, we try to stop this from happening, which is a correct way to respond to them. You're not here to have negative low-frequency interactions. That is not our mission. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that, and it's, like, yeah. you embodied that, yeah. right? It's yeah. like, your mission isn't to, you know, have continuous low-frequency engagements with your boat and your crew and you know, the fish fires and all the things. I mean, there was a lot of alcohol involved uh, so well, the, the whole industry is rife with alcohol and um, substance addiction. and the drugs mm-hmm. and everything else and low frequency motivations and mm-hmm. fears and terror and all kinds of things. There's professional versions of it, but even yes. those I've been on those and they're completely 100% motivated by a financial interest, you know. Mm-hmm. Above everything else. Above everything else. We're not saying that financial interest is a bad thing. It's not because we're living in a world and a society that... It's better that you're financially well off so you can have the power to do, invest. But we wouldn't necessarily do it at the expense of everyone. Exactly. So that's the difference, right? Uh, When you do negative and horrible things purely to gain profit, that's when it goes wrong. That's Or to gain anything, to gain pleasure of some kind or to gain power over others, to gain whatever... When it, it damages other people in yourself, then that's not good motivation. All right. Often when we, what happens is good things always happen to me. Many light workers will hide this fact or feel bad about it because it seems to be the opposite for other people. And I don't want to make them feel worse about it. They can start feeling guilty that they have a charmed life or worried that they might ruin it somehow by take, talking about it. <laughs> well, you know, in general practice... I imagine it probably depends on who you're hanging out with, but mm-hmm. for some reason, people are tended to share their dramatic experiences. Like one horrible thing happened, and a thousand nice things happens today, and I'm going to tell you about the horrible thing. Mm-hmm. Indeed. And if I only tell you about all the nice things, then what are you, Pollyanna? Are you full of it? Or are you just hiding stuff? Or you know, <laughs> or maybe you're boring. Right. It's interesting, isn't it? All these excuses will come up, right? Yeah. Or, you know, you're bragging. Right, right. Or what's the real story behind that? (laughs) She may say hiding. They're obviously hiding something. Nobody has a life like that. Yes. Okay. (laughs) For me, the real cruncher of a problem is how to make sure that our choices that brought about the experiences in our lives are coming from our higher self. And not from some destructive or limiting program or influence that we've unconsciously integrated into our lives. Uh Circumstances in our lives are always a direct result of our choices. We may be talking about millions of tiny little choices throughout the decades or one big woober of a decision made in one day. Sometimes they're choices made before we were even born. But all of our choices are subject to us changing our minds about them. We can change our minds about stuff and start making new choices in a consistent way, which brings about a change in our experience of life. So choices made before we were born are like karma things? If we, like, if if a person, yeah, if a person believes in karma, then 
they will make choices and stuff like that. Yeah, they don't yeah. have to even believe in karma this lifetime to have karma exactly. from a last lifetime that coming they in. in. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it all depends on the definition of karma that we're talking about, right? Right. I have heard several, and it's one of those terms that's been co-opted to some degree. Oh, hundred percent. We take yeah. it. For assigning blame, we take it mm -hmm. for assigning judgment. We take it mm -hmm. for assigning a lot Putting of things. Putting up with negative things. And I don't think probably in its origin it was no. actually that. No, it wasn't. It was probably something, something entirely else. different. It was but. something entirely different, yes. So basically um, what, what we need to do, and one of the things I want to clarify here before we go on to the next part, yeah. is that sometimes, yes, a negative experience will happen that was our higher self choice for having that experience. Right. Oh, I would like to know how it feels to X, Y, Z. So X, Y, Z happens and you feel it and you have that experience. But it's not the rule for the light workers on Earth who are listening to this. You didn't actually come here for that anymore. Right, that's you know? the point. That's, that's the, point. the whole point. We're in a now, split. Exactly. So that makes a huge divide, like a line in this sand or whatever that's called, you know, that separates you from the rest of humanity. And you probably have always felt that you were different from the rest of humanity. And that's why. Because in this lifetime, you didn't come here to have those low frequency experiences just because you wanted to have them, right, at a higher self choice level. And we could even think of everything that people do is a higher self level. And we can think of it from the perspective of very long life plans and things like that. Many lifetimes life plan. However, in this lifetime, things are different. Yes. Did you want to add something there? Hans? Well, that's the, the distinction because oftentimes we oftentimes I've seen people lump everything into one, mm -hmm. one, one, one bump. One like what? Can bundle. you give an example? Like all these things happen for a reason and there's bad things happen, but it made me a better person. And oh, I, right. I learned <laughs> things through these hard lessons, these hard lessons, because I'm a blockhead. So, you know, I need to have tough lessons. Then, then I get it. Yeah. This kind of uh, justifications for low frequency experiences, right? Mm -hmm. And these were true in light, dark reality. Mm -hmm. They were true for the experience you came for. Mm -hmm. You wanted some suffering. You wanted mm -hmm. some whatever. Just These are the nature of a low frequency experiences. Okay. What is that? Oh, I cut my arm. <laughs> Jeez, that's great. <laughs> <Not>. <laughs> now somebody, somebody close to me will care about me when they maybe didn't before. Oh, oh gosh, boy, we get yeah. to manipulate people. Whatever. Yeah. Through injury. Ah, here we go. Now take care of me. Right. Or or whatever. You know. Yeah. I'm, oh, it I'm makes just, it a little bit more challenging more because challenging. life was so easy. <laughs> I could do it with two hands, but can I do it with one? Yeah, exactly. Right. right. So the motivation could be all sorts of things. Right. These are and motivations light, for light, dark experiences. Light, light, dark experiences. In light, dark reality, that's the nature of why you came. Yes. To have them. Yes, exactly. So in Split, that's where it becomes a little bit different. Yeah, because you didn't come for that. Not if you're listening to this no. and still listening. Right. If you're still you didn't listening, come for that. You didn't. You no, really didn't. No. All right. A choice made from a harassed self level is a choice we really want to experience yeah. from expanded levels of awareness. It may be contradicting some choices with like from lesser levels of awareness, but it is in our best, our best earth experience to go along with what that higher self choice is. It's not always easy to know, though. But yeah, I mean, at a, let's take a very simple one. It's like okay. uh, my body would like to go get drunk. Right. Drink of a couple of drinks of whiskey and hang out with my mates yeah my higher self knows oh no, that's that. an open door to a lot of things that we don't and are not here to experience right. so we would rather not actually right but i would really like to my right. mates would really like it if i did it they don't yeah. even like to hang out with me if i don't exactly i'm sticking them up i'm gonna lose all my friends my friends are gonna leave yeah because who wants to hang out with a fuddy duddy no or a teetotter a teetotter judging us <laughs> <laughs> so right you can see the higher and the lower, higher and the lower right. self, the body. Well, well, I mean, I say body, but even oftentimes your body's like, no, no we'd rather do not. That. But do that. if you insist, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> we'll turn our liver on and whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, 
That's a really good exp example of the two different choices. And um, sometimes it is a little bit tough to go with the higher self choice, right? No, I'm not right, it's go. not as always as obvious as no. should I drink a gallon of whiskey no. or not? Right, it's not always as obvious. That's pretty obvious, no. Mm -hmm. so sometimes here's it's like, like, let's make another for instance. Okay. Here's a list of items you can look at to see if your decision is truly a higher self choice. Okay, I'm going to say my my choice of something that I want to do is I want to take the dogs for a walk. Okay, all right. Is the choice made primarily of fear based reasons? Well, sometimes. Yeah. I'm afraid of the damage to the enclosure or them put to each other if I don't. Okay. So not immediate body preservation choices. No. But more like the decision choice such as work, love, health, spiritual expansion. So damage to their themselves as a like a, a body, right? Yeah, I'm a little afraid. So if I take the dogs for a walk and I'm afraid they're going to damage themselves, I'm kind of like already set for them damaging themselves, right? Right, right. If I look at it closer... Mm -hmm. I might say I do want to take the dogs for a walk, but I'm not. I'm going to process that fear. Yeah. I want to take the dogs for a walk so that we can enjoy each other, each other, the and land. the nature, and the yeah. space, and the place, and the yeah. exercise, and the feeling of satisfaction from the having a physical and... exertion. Yeah. Yeah. So if it's fear based, then it's not a higher self choice. Yeah. Because your higher self choice, so your higher self is not motivated with fear. Yeah, totally right? isn't. No. Got it. And then you might go process your fear that they're going to damage themselves or if I don't. destroy the enclosure if you don't. And you find that actually they were barking all night and they're really tired and they'd rather sleep <laughs> in a little nest, you know? Yeah. So, it's like, yeah, it's, it's an interesting concept. It's interesting. It? And that was a small thing, you know, take the yeah. dogs for a walk. We could... Yeah. We, we should probably line towards a bigger thing. It's like, like should I change this job to a different job? Right. So what would be the motivation for changing jobs? Let's say you, you're afraid you're going to get sacked. Right. So I want to get a new job because I'm afraid I'm going to get fired from my old job. Yeah. So you don't want to experience rejection. You just want to be the one that breaks up oh. with them rather than breaking up with you. Right. So the... Tendency in that situation is to find a new job that you will get fired from. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> or you will actually get fired from this one. <laughs> or you will actually get fired from this one and have not found the job. Yeah. Yeah. That that's the that's the nature of a high frequent of a low a, a low light dark reality. Yes, yeah, light dark reality. Is it tends to uh, propagate propagate or, light dark experiences. Yes. So fear based stuff. If you don't process your fear, man. You're going to actually feed <laughs> propagate and propagate those experiences. The manifestation orchestration of mm -hmm. more light, dark experiences. Yeah, more fear. So we uh, strive to make our choices from a clear state. One well, yes. that's not motivated by fear, but maybe inspiration. Not inspiration, motivated by curiosity. Yeah, curiosity. Exploration. Love. Love. Yeah. Okay. It's, yeah. Okay. Two. Do we feel like we're a victim? Oh, I'm always being blah blah here, so I need to leave. These are small self decisions. When we feel victimized, we're literally giving away our power to an external source. So again, not a higher self choice. Yeah, so it's like that boss is always bullying, always, always picking, picking on, on me. me. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I remember there was a, a one of my students said that to me. He says, my boss is always picking on me, always <laughs> picking on me. And I asked him, uh, how was your last job? <laughs> <laughs> what happened in your last? Oh, that boss was always picking on me too. What about the one before? Oh, yeah. Just, Bosses are just evil. Bosses just pick on you. They just pick on me. Oh, pick on their, you know, whatever. Subordinates. Subordinates all the time. They're just bullies. <laughs> Bosses are bullies. Okay. <laughs> We have a common denominator here. <laughs> it's you. <laughs> so let's uh, process the fear of the boss bullying you and um, stop seeing him as a bully. Becoming aware of it. Yeah, and stop seeing him as a bully. And uh, yeah, become aware of it. The fact that it's a pattern. This is a pattern. I've yeah, 
Because I've known, th- I mean, tons and tons of people who get on great with their boss and d- would do anything to support their boss, you know? I was, yeah, I was just watching a YouTube of one of the billionaire guys. Mm-hmm. And he's a billionaire type of construction kind of fella. And they work, they go underneath the crawl spaces and put in dehumidifiers and they fix the mm-hmm. underneath there. And that's like a place that hardly anybody wants to go. And he found Oh, I've heard about him. Yeah. yeah. Nobody really wanted to go there. Right. So he said, well, I'm not afraid of that. I can take mm-hmm. care of that. And he generated a billion dollar business out of that. Mm-hmm. And not a um, negative, like it, there were no negative motivations in it. It was, and it is all positive. And yeah. he goes through the whole office and, Talk to everybody. Mm-hmm. They're there for 20 years, 16 years, 17 years, 40 years. Mm-hmm. There's all of them on the wall. They're pictures. And mm-hmm. these guys have Love all this excellent, you know, Experience. experiences yeah. of their job and their work and their boss. It's like, up. there's no, this is it. Yeah. And he writes a books and motivation speeches. <laughs> yes. And, you know, he has a... Uh, a daily quote that like mm-hmm. inspires him and you can use it to help inspire you if you like. And yeah. he spent his whole childhood listening to motivational tapes in his <laughs> nice. car and all of his construction worker friends are like, what the hell are you doing? Put in the <laughs> rap music or the rock and roll. He's like, no, I prefer to listen to this. Yes. <laughs> like, higher yourself choices. Higher self choices. Yeah. That was really yeah. amazing. Yeah. I, I found it really that. very inspirational. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, do we a lot blame to ourselves or others? Blame is not the same as the ability to respond, which is responsibility. If there is blame involved, we're not in a higher self mode. Higher self is not motivated motivated by potential for blame. What about that one, honey? Blame, um, blame, blame. I'm pretty sure it's somebody's The government fault. did it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the government did it. The Russians did it. And the Russians. And the Chinese. And the Putins. And the Putins. And the Bidens. And I mean, Biden. the Trumps. The Trumps. Yeah. yeah. Those are the ones to blame. Yeah, there you go. Because of that, we should move. Right. Or oh, we won't have a choice to move. We won't have a choice. He'll lock us in. Yeah. And then they'll tie us down and make us do something. Yeah. Oh, can I tell you a little story about that lockdown thing? Oh, sure. So, uh, some years back... About, is it three or four years ago now? Could be. Um, my higher self <laughs> guided me to rearrange my entire life. I remember. To not travel. I remember being and not it was so several, happy about that. Several years ago, <laughs> like three or four, four or five years maybe. And I was like, this is very strange because I used to do a lot of in-person events in Europe and around in the United States and I would be flying a lot. Yeah, but you married a fisherman and I married a world traveler and I wanted to travel the world and I don't know about you. I didn't know actually you were a fisherman. (laughs) (laughs) I missed that little detail. (laughs) Like, what? Were you going where? You have a what? (laughs) What are you doing that for? (laughs) (laughs) But anyways, my hair self said... Knuckle down, was it hatches? What was the saying? Batten down the hatches. Batten down the hatches. You're not going to travel for the foreseeable future. We don't know when, if ever, it will come back. When, if ever. So I rearranged my entire life around that higher self choice. And I didn't have a good why for it. I liked travel. My family's all in Europe. You know, most of my family's in Europe or now in other states. And, um... So it was very, it was a very strange guidance to receive, and I tested and I looked at it, and it had no real reason for it at all. And we even made uh, an extraordinary, <clears throat> extraordinary effort to get the Shaman Shack going as an event center because we're gonna need one, right? If we're which, not gonna travel, <laughs> which is a funny thing, anyway, contrary to our. Smaller Friends. self-likes. Like, you know what? let's live with a whole bunch of people. No, we don't like that. That's how I lower self sounds. <laughs> so we did all that. And then there was a worldwide lockdown when people couldn't travel and all sorts of things came into place yeah. um, in airports and other locations. And so it was very broad. It was a very broad thing. And I, I understood 
the hires of guidance from years earlier. Right, right? Because it was it was more like it was also a spiritual thing. It was an energetic thing. It wasn't just a physical thing. And it was fascinating, right? But there was no blame involved, right? No, but when it did happen and to come about, and it was fairly impactful for, I think, a large majority of people. It was oh, yes. like pretty much nothing. For us, it for was us. a nothing, yeah. Maybe a little nicer. <laughs> you like to, the note is coming. <laughs> Well, we still had people coming. Yes, we did. Yeah, <laughs> we yes, actually we did. did, and it was an, it was actually an incredible experience to have that, in spite of all the that was amazing, amazing level of fear cranked to the roof. Yeah, and the effect. And it happened anyway. We, we had did our event. event people came, anyway. from, all people the came world. from all over the world. The Even though the airplanes were closed, no and airplanes were flying, but that didn't matter. I don't know how they they did it, but they did it. They managed yeah. to arrive. It was amazing, really amazing, time. yeah. So, higher self versus lower self. We don't blame, right? Right. Okay, another one. Four, we get hit of a strong negative emotion, adrenaline, or drama. These feed the low-frequency entities and situations of the world. As a light worker, this is never a higher self decision. Oh, that's one of those, like, if I say, should I go to the casino tonight? And I get a look at it, I go, Ugh. kind of like, no. No. Because I've hit with a wave of no's. Yeah. Maybe five years ago. Right now, if I say, can I go to the casino? The only actual image that comes is, oh, they have a really nice restaurant there. <laughs> I was thinking that too. <laughs> so when you said not it's exactly like, accurate. They, they, have, they, have, they really have a really nice restaurant, restaurant in there. <laughs> House of Seven Brothers, I think they call it. Yes. I've seen some pretty nice pictures of some pretty yummy food. We went there once. Yes. It was really good food. <laughs> so, you know. For, I mean, 10 years ago, if I said that same thing, I would get that wave of Ooh, negative and repulsions, yeah. like stay away from there, don't go there. Mm -hmm. And uh, probably for good enough, for a good reason. But now, yeah, it doesn't do that because my mm -hmm. higher self choices are a little bit more in charge. Mm -hmm. So if my look at go to the casino, what would happen at there? Well, negative we'd stuff. have it. No, we'd. If we went there, we'd have an excellent dinner. Oh, yes, we would. But I, was like, I thought you were talking about before. Ten years ago, if I went there, it would be negative stuff. Yeah. yeah. And every time I did go, it, it was negative stuff. Right. I never really had a positive experience there. Wow. Okay. So I'm also talking about things like a person will, at a subconscious level, um, let's say, go, start going out with a person that is full of drama, negativity, and really negative traits that are going to hurt them. And then, of course, it all plays out and the person gets deeply hurt. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's a strong hit of a negative emotion. Right. And it feeds on drama and feeds on stuff and it sticks for quite a few days. And this, this whole situation happened to feed that drama, to feed those negative emotions and the entities and situations that feed on that. Including now the person who gets off on drama as well, right? Or, yeah. So those type of situations and stepping into those type of situations and it's never a higher self decision. Do you know what I'm saying? I feel a little tiny bit lost, honestly. I'm, a, I'm trying to think of uh, situations where I will be checking mm -hmm. this choice that I'm making. Mm-hmm. And the, re, the response would be a hit of strong negative emotion mm -hmm. or drama. adrenaline or drama. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm trying to think of one that I, that I might make, a choice that I might be making, a choice that I might be wanting to make. Mm -hmm. that, that is the response of, and I'm not really finding one really, really on top of my head. How about you? So um, going back to the relationship thing, I noticed that when um, when I was younger and I was dating, I would often, when I'd met the new person, the new guy, if if I got a kind of fear, like it was almost a really strange fear of rejection type energy or fear of being hurt, then I would pursue that relationship. Wow. Right? 
And I couldn't understand why. I once became conscious and aware of it. I'm like, wait, that's weird, right? That's pretty weird, yeah. That's really weird. And then when I looked at it, it was because of the way that I was brought up. It was a, a very highly abusive situation with my parents and then um, the rest of the family growing up. What my body learned was that people who love you, are going. if they really love you, they're going to hurt you, Right. So there's a kind of weird learning right. that is at a subconscious level. Once I identified it, I used that feeling to reject the guys. Right? Oh, that guy gives me that feeling. <laughs> Stay away. Stay away, man. Right? Okay. But that took some learning because I had no experience, previous experience of positive relationships. So how would I learn that? Right? So that's this one also, you know, you get the hit. And then you get the fear, the adrenaline and everything. And if you're going through it at a subconscious level, yeah, like you create really negative situations for yourself. Like you said, if you had that feeling and you went into the casino, you had negative experiences there. Yeah. So it's like that. It propagates itself and it feeds on itself and it continues and it becomes larger and even more unpleasant. And, you know, then you end up drunk. You see, that's the only way you can escape it. Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> you know? But once you become uh, aware that if you indulge in those, you're actually feeding the suffering of the world and all these entities that feed off all that stuff. I think I see now. I'm addicted to that stuff. It's like, should I do that? Oh, I'm very afraid. I'm going to get like totally, it's going to be that. Okay, yeah, let's do that. It's a big challenge. Let's do that. <laughs> yeah. That's the, yeah. what you're talking about. Right, okay. right. So it's like, yeah, no, don't do that, right? Okay. And start learning what motivates you. You start learning what motivates you. And you can, you know, crank it up a few notches. And you can go, like, in many directions. As long as they're high-frequency responses. Yeah? So, if something... Puts you in a state of fear, for example, you, you know, step back, you pause, you think about it, right? You process that fear and then see, would I take that same decision? Minus the fear. Minus the fear, right? Yeah. Okay. So these are just four examples you can look at, the way to respond to those situations to say, this is interesting. How would I respond for my higher self instead? That's a good question to right? ask. Yeah. So it's like if you're feeling pushed by yourself or others to, to do something that you don't want to do, it's like, how would I respond from a higher self instead, right? And this reminds me actually of a, a situation that happened when I was a teenager. And to me, it was like, hmm, okay, I need to look at this because there was a situation with uh, in England with a girl who, you know, the... the Boogie jumping, or what was that called? Bungee jumping. Bungee jumping. It was just started, just began. It was a whole, I mean, I mean, people were obsessed about it in the UK. I don't know about here, but. Oh, yeah. Everybody was at it. And, not me, not once. <laughs> and then I wanted to do it. No actually. way, yeah, could forget it. Yeah. No way. Anyways, <laughs> um, but I was feeling pressured, right? Mm. And then in the news appeared a story of some friends who took a birthday girl that gave her the present of a bungee jump and she didn't want to do it she was terrified of it terrified and she did not want to do it she did not want to do it and they sat with her and tucked her into it eventually she got on that ledge right and she jumped and because she was so afraid she panicked and tried to grab the rope and she twisted and turned and tried to grab and tried to stop herself going down and she was decapitated Right. Well, I, that's exactly what I would have expected. Don't right? do that, Jake. Yeah. So don't ever jump off anything with a rubber band on you. When I looked at it, like I was like, "Whoa!" She knew, and then she knew. What did she know? She knew how she would react, and she knew it wasn't safe because she would react in absolute terror and fear. But she did it anyway because she was told she was, you know, talked into it people telling me it's fine, it's safe, and you just do this, and you hold your arms in, and whatever, and you'll be fine. But she just couldn't do it. 
right? So to me, it's like, what was the higher self, you know, response there? Was it a little self? I think it was a little self that made was, her do it. Right, because how'd she get talked into it? Right, exactly. Yeah. So it, to me, it's like at the end of the day, you could say, oh, everything is a higher self decision. But I can tell you that the, the doors for death, there's gazillions of them in your life. And obviously you don't take them all. You just take the one. Yeah, yeah the one that you take. <laughs> the one that you take. <laughs> so that was yeah, absolutely. At a higher self level, there was a door for her to die then that day on her birthday, but she didn't have to take it. Yeah, and it feels to me when I tapped into it that as soon as it happened, she went, "Oh shit!" Was like that was a big oopsie, right? So when you feel that, oh god, that was a big oopsie. You guaranteed that that was not a higher self choice. That was a higher self choice. But like those decisions can have huge. Impact. Consequences and impact, yeah. So always think, what would my higher self do in this situation, right? I'm pretty sure there's people who, when they look at the idea of jumping off a bungee with a bungee, they don't get like terrified, terrified, or... strong negative emotions, mm -hmm. drama involved. Mm -hmm. It's like pure flight. Yeah. Of, of the maybe a little fear, like. <laughs> A tinge you know, of it, maybe? But you're still in control, right? You're going right. to keep your arms in and you're going to do the whole thing properly. At a higher self level, for them, that is like an expansive experience. Yes. yes if you is. threw me off the ledge with a rubber band on me, no. no not a higher self. <laughs> not a higher self choice. Experience, no. Not at all. <laughs> the, the opposite. It's entirely the opposite. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes. Yes, indeed. I think it would be interesting to see what... um. Fred and Kara and maybe Ashley or Ileana have to say about that. Oh my gosh, yes, our panel. Our panel. I can't wait to hear some of these experiences. <laughs> yes. So don't forget, go and subscribe to the second half, the yep. second part. And you can do that subscribe star. Find us there. There's all the links and everything are gonna be all over the internet when wherever you found it. Yeah, it's very easy to find. Very easy to find. Okay. See I'll you there. See you then. Bye. Love you, honey. Love you. Even as a tiny little kid, I would find that there was a lot of drama growing up in my family, in my country, in my culture, people around me. I could perceive it and I could sense it and see it. And when this drama was happening, I remember even when there was like a dramatic event, somebody getting injured or whatever, I would keep my cool. That's what people would call it. Even as a little kid, I would look and see and respond to what was happening around me.